irreverent, over the top, and smart as a whip. This is the Rob Black Show. We talk about what's happening on the market on a regular basis on this show. Fridays, I put together a strategy content show for the podcast. <clears throat> if you're looking for more daily news, you're looking more for Monday through Thursday. If you're looking more for strategy, you're looking at the Thursday podcast for a long weekend. Um, <clears throat> it is what it is. Hopefully, it helps you. Stocks are edging higher today as the market looks past Russia to the Fed. What Russia said last night was nothing short of shocking. And yet Wall Street's going, yeah, what's the Fed going to do today? And it's interesting because we don't really believe in the back of our heads that Putin's willing to throw a nuclear bomb in a country neighboring his country, destroying his legacy, if there's anything left of his legacy at this point in time. We also don't believe the Fed's going to raise interest rates to the point of pain because in the past they've backed off. But the Fed got inflation wrong this time last year, saying that it was going to be transitory going into 2022. This time last year was 2021. And Putin got it wrong. Ukraine wasn't easy to, to take over. When you fight for defending your country, you fight a lot tougher than you, you fight taking over someone else's country. Mexico has had three big earthquakes all on the same exact date. What are the odds? They say it's over one in 133,000. So you have better odds of winning. No, you have better odds of hitting an earthquake three times in a row on the same exact calendar date in Mexico at the same location area than you do of having to play the win the lottery. And yet more people will win the lottery, right? Yeah. So it's Fed big interest rate decision day. Um, I think it's all but expected. And what's going to happen afterwards is they're going to release some data saying, oh, out of the 20 members, 13 see interest rates hike lasting through 2024. They'll say out of the 20 members, two want to stop raising interest rates. They'll give us a little data like that. That's all hypothetical, of course. But they'll also answer questions. Um, one of the questions will be Steve Leesman from CNBC. Uh, Jay Powell. Uh, what number are you looking for to see where you want to stop? Like, there'll be questions like that. And I hate it because it's sometimes you feel like the reporters aren't economists. And you want them to be more economists than reporters. Sometimes you're like, eh, this one feels a little bit on the younger side. You get the idea. So let's go forward with um, some of the daily news, shall we? Um, Gap said they're laying off 500 employees at their corporate office. It's probably a good thing. Uh, Wall Street kind of needs to see job losses so that they feel comfortable. Wall Street needs to see the job losses to lower the earnings expectations. If earnings are hitting all-time highs, companies don't fire people. Goldman Sachs is expanding its cash management services for companies into the European Union, trying to get more sources of revenue away from their choppy investment banking and trading businesses. Chamath Palantha is shutting down two special purpose acquisition vehicles, SPACs. SPACs were a big story in the last two years as companies really, maybe it was the COVID thing, maybe the investment bankers uh, didn't want to meet in their high rise towers. So companies were coming public as I've got $2 million or I've got $2 billion. Let's use a bigger number. And I'm going to go find a media company. Who believes in me? I'm going to go buy a company that's ailing. Uh, so one of the most speculative investors out there saying, I, I got to shut this down because they're they, I can't find anything to, to boy equals money. Looking for a girl, a corporation. I can't find any mergers. Hmm. Companies are rethinking corporate travel policies as business class tickets sometimes hit as high as $20,000. Can you imagine? Uh, I will use first class like once every five years if it's on points and if it's across an ocean. Never using first class on a three hour or less trip and not with points. I know you're saying, great. Last night, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced partial mobilization for reservists. Today, you're seeing plane tickets out of Russia skyrocket. 
It's the first mobilization in Russia since World War II, and it comes after humiliating battlefield losses with the Kremlin's forces in recent weeks. Um, the Kremlin said, we're going to swallow up four regions, and we're going to try to annex them, as we did with Crimea. Um, the world's like, nope, not this time. He got away with that silliness last time. And Putin's like, you know, I got nuclear weapons. I'm not bluffing. I got nuclear weapons. So a couple things on the Fed rate hike. How will it affect your plans to buy a house? You're getting socked by higher interest rates, uh, borrowing cost. How do higher interest rates affect the stock market? It's two. There's the higher rates and how it affects individual stocks. And there's also higher interest rates and how it it affects recessions. Recessions obviously affect stock markets. Fed rate hikes, do they affect all credit cards? Typically so. So your debt becomes more expensive to service. Auto loans, yep. A little less painful there. Um, Student loan question marks, okay. But bank savings is one area that it's a positive. So I've got a Flourish money market account. It's F-O-L-O-U-R-I-S-H. You can find a similar money market account by going to bankrate.com. Mine is corporately tied towards EP Wealth. So it is uh, industrial grade compared to what typical consumers get who don't have financial planners. You can check it out at flourish.com, but also just check out bankrate.com if you're looking for something to sock away some of your cash in, getting better than 0%. Anxiety amongst women are at a 10-year high. I wonder why that is. Biden is going to be at the United Nations today talking about Russia and Taiwan. It's his second address to the UN. Adam Levine is denying affairs amid wife Beati Prince Lou's pregnancy, admitting he crossed the line. Many women are coming out saying, yep, he did that with me too. And in my world, I'm like, who cares? But it really is one of the flaws in, in humanity is, is social media makes it way too easy to do stupid things. Please tell your children to monitor their social media and not to do too stupid things. In a bit of good news, the Sultan of Swat Aaron judge hit his home run number 60. He's on the brink of reaching Roger Maris's mark. And it's just fun. You know, I tuned in the game last night to see if nasty Nestor Cortez could shut down uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Nope. And in the ninth inning, Judge hits a home run and the Yankees rally for five runs to, to come out and win. It is a rare moment of entertainment in a world that's just like, ah, stock market, inflation, down markets. You get the idea. Um, one quick thought for you. You know how you feel bad for yourself? Maybe you've lost some in your 401k. I don't look at it on a one-year basis. I look at it on a three, five, 10, 15-year basis and I'm stoked. I'm happy. Um, if I have to take one bad year to get 10 good years, I'm in. But Mark Zuckerberg's net worth has fallen $70 billion. Woo! That's not a rounding error. I think shareholders can get very frustrated with him very fast. Will he survive 2023? Or will the board do the right thing and say, you're spending too much money on the metaverse? I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. A straightforward approach to managing your money. The Rob Black Show. In a slow housing market, sellers ask, why list a home when you can collect rent? Are you ready to be a landlord is the question. And I'll tell you what, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. I've done it correctly where I had a business and I bought an office property and paid myself rent. That's awesome. I've done an incorrectly where I bought a home out of the market in a market that I've only set foot in twice in my life for two weekends, once to buy a real estate property, another one driving through to check on it. That's the wrong way to do it. But the home that you're living in now, you're saying, eh, I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to retire. I'm ready to go somewhere else. It's going to be tough for you psychologically to say, I'm going to put on the market and take 10% below what I could have got three months ago. But that's kind of where we're sitting at right now, depending on the quality of your home and how much it is. Some people have decided to rent out their home. 
I've always had a problem collecting above market rents. I've always had a problem psychologically saying, yeah, overpay me or I'm going to gouge you. I tend to go into it with a mentality of, eh, eh, make it a little cheaper than the average. Try to get a good quality renter in for two years instead of one year. And that doesn't always work, right? In fact, I probably have the wrong mindset to be a landlord because I, I care too much. And my property management company loves me. They're like, hey, the, the, the tenants complaining the air conditioning's not working. I'm like, buy new air conditioning. It's 100 degrees. Why didn't we service that last year? And then I throw out a curse word under my, my mouth. Like, I get it. Homeowners often rely on the proceeds of a home sale for a down payment or to help them qualify for a mortgage to purchase a new home. You're starting to see companies like Zillow and Open Door say, you know what? We tried to flip houses and we're having a problem doing it. You're seeing the phenomenon of delisting and renting becoming very noticeable now. I, I hope you get property management. I hope it's good quality property management because they all differ like golden clay. Properties that were leasing out for $1,500 last year now have been pushed up by another $300 to $400 a month, making them much more profitable on average across America. An increase in rental inventory could help flatten rent growth. Rents for single-family homes nationally rose 13.4% year over year, so a lot of moving pieces. Do you want to sell your home or not? We've seen prices come down for two months in a row now on existing home sales. I believe that we should be at least looking at six months to 18 months. And I'll go back to my home that I bought in 2008 and tell you that there was a three-year period of price declines. That's 36 months before it started moving back up. It took six years to get to where it was when it fell from the top. Um, to give you an idea or an example, in 1989, the day before the big earthquake in San Francisco, knock on wood, um, if you had bought a home one day before the earthquake, it took you seven years to sell it for $1 more than you bought it. Are you prepared for that? Uh, I saw a great article, and I, I, I thought it was great, of someone who said, I bought a home at the top and I regret it. I bought a home at the top last year. I, I got five more months of watching it increase. Now I've seen two or three months of watching it decrease. I'm still up, but in the end, I do expect to be upside down on what I paid before things settle down and start resuming a normalized growth because it was just crazy the last two years. Um, of 1999, not 1999, 2019, 2020, 2021, were just three back-to-back -back crazy years of price increases. Super low interest rates were the catalyst for it. I am a homeowner. I am a have. If you do not have, you're like a renter and you're like, you're killing me, Rob. So some people are feeling this phrase. It seems like I bought my home at probably the peak of the market. I get it. And the unfortunate phrase next is, I'm kind of feeling a little regret because it's not the home that I want to be in for the long term. I got in just because I had to get in because prices were going up at an impossible rate. What should I do? People practically can't take $100,000, $200,000 in losses. Um, For me, last year was a more expensive year in home maintenance than any other year that I've ever had in my life because I bought a home as is. And then I noticed the funky smell in the basement. So I had to figure out how to get that removed, i.e. water from around the house, moving elsewhere, expensive. Um, I'm just going to throw it down to you. This segment is about turning your home into a rental. Are you sure you want to do that? I'm not against it. It's just a whole nother business model of watching how your finances play out. I am not against it. I think there's some successful rentals. I think there's some very problematic places to rent. And I, I wouldn't want 
for instance, the home I'm in now, I would have to rent it out for almost $8,000. And I just feel weird asking people for that much money on a monthly basis. But that's what it's worth. That's what other homes are renting for. So on top of that, finishing this idea of you feel like you had to get in last year at this time, you probably have a pretty good mortgage rate. So if you bought a home and you're feeling regret, as long as you didn't pay cash, you probably have a pretty good interest rate. When I bought a home and I saw the home values go down, I got in at the last year, but prior to that two years straight down, I would have had a pretty good mortgage rate and I would have felt pretty good about that on a 30-year basis, a 15-year basis. But definitely on a one-year basis, there's a weird teeter-totter between price of a home versus interest rates. If I'm going to be in a home for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, I want low interest rates on the mortgage. If I'm going to be in a home for two to three years, I want to use an adjustable rate mortgage and I want to see how those prices fall. It's not black and white. I'm not going to sing the song. It's the beauty of gray. No, it's not black and white. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial. Find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. Thanks for listening. Don't miss an episode of The Rob Black Show. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Join me now, Patrick O'Hare with briefing.com. It is Fed Day. It's always interesting what happens on Fed Day because... It is kind of like you expect. It's a a big mess. A lot goes on. We start one way. We may go a different way. We may go way higher. We may go way lower. It's impossible to say at this point in time. Mr. O'Hare, briefing.com. I start my day each day and every day with your page one column. And today, it's pretty much so dedicated to the Federal Reserve. Is, Is that what we have going on or is there anything else you can find? Yeah. Good morning, Rob. Nice to be back with you. Um, well, clearly the uh, the the Fed meeting is is the focal point today, um, but there is something else going on that is kind of being marginalized at the moment because of the focus on the Fed, and that's you know what President Putin announced in terms of you know mobilizing more reservists to uh, to basically ramp up the war effort in Ukraine. Um, that is surprisingly kind of become a backseat issue today, uh, but uh, could come home to roost uh, a little bit further down the road here. I think some world leaders are talking to the UN today. So that, that, that will hit the, the news cycle, but probably not until this evening. Um, but this morning we do get the Federal Reserve and it's widely expected 75 basis points. Some people are saying 100. Um, it's kind of a shock and awe. I think I saw one analyst say 150 basis points. Just get it over with. Rip off the Band-Aid. Um, seeing that it takes quite a few months for interest rates to bleed into the system. We're seeing softening in housing. We're seeing uh, softening in the rental market, maybe not as fast as the Fed wants, but we're seeing some of the high end. Um, What more does the Fed want, do you think? Or, and again, this is a national pastime, right? What's, what does the Fed think? Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Right. Well, I think, uh, to be a little bit flippant, <laughs> I think the Fed wants about another 600 basis points off the rate of inflation. Uh, okay. We have, uh, you know, CPI was up 8.3 percent year over year, and and the Fed's target is two percent. Uh, now, granted, that is you know driven largely by a, a PCE inflation forecast, but nonetheless, um, you know, we saw quite the nasty reaction after that August CPI report because it was apparent to all market participants that the inflation rate is not coming down as quickly as people would like to see it. And therefore, uh, it leads to the conclusion that, you know, the Fed is going to have to not only be more aggressive with its rate hikes, but be uh, more stubborn in terms of staying at these higher interest rate levels. Um, So um, so the Fed certainly wants to see, you know, inflation trending lower and getting there, you know, sooner rather than later. But um, I think one of the things that really jumped out to us at briefing.com with the Jackson Hole speech is that it was finally that that moment where um, where you got a sense that Fed Chair Powell and the Fed really means business now in terms of regaining the inflation fighting credibility that it that it lost, frankly. And uh, you know that's also why you know we don't think it uh, we don't think that the Fed chair is going to come out today and sound 
as if he has a softer tone. Um, you know, I said in my page one column that I think that that would be foolish uh, because it would just uh, it would just undo all of the uh, good inflation fighting will that was built with that Jackson Hole speech. Um, so, um, you know, it will. I think the market's reaction today will largely depend on if there's any you know new information or a new tone from the Fed chair. But if you get more of the same with the 75 basis point rate increase that's widely expected, uh, you could see a market that does do well in the wake of that uh, determination because it has done so poorly uh, in recent weeks or certainly since Jackson Hole up to this point. And it's created a little bit of an, a short-term oversold condition. And so the market might find a reason to rally on the basis that uh, that things were better than feared today. I saw an interesting quote about the Federal Reserve. They have to hurt someone. Um, my home price is down on a year-to-year basis. My Well, no, that's not actually true. On a month-to-month basis, maybe it peaked in January and I'm starting to project that I forgot I had gains in the last half. But it's also hurting my 401k. Um, but I'm considered wealthy. Um, on the other hand, if, if you keep rates low, maybe I keep hitting 52-week highs in my net worth, but maybe the middle class and the lower class of America um, have trouble fighting inflation, keeping up with cost of living versus wage inflation that they're not getting to the tune of cost of living inflation. Um, do you agree that the Fed has to hurt someone here? Well, you know, I don't like to say that it has to hurt somebody, but it inevitably will um, because, you know, the the stated aim right now is to weaken demand. And uh, the Fed chair himself kind of keeps pointing at the tightness of the labor market as something that is uh, creating undue concern at the Fed about inflation pressures, you know, remaining high. And, you know, it, it, you know, the Fed indirectly wants to weaken that labor market to take off some of the wage-based inflation pressures that's bleeding through to some of these, you know, the broad-based inflation trends we're seeing. Uh, and, uh, and so ultimately to help alleviate that issue, um, you know, the Fed won't directly say it, but, you know, um, it, it wants you know, it's going to need people to lose their jobs, frankly. Uh, you need to see a higher unemployment rate uh, so that um, so that the labor market or the pool of labor becomes less demanding with wage um, uh, demands and that uh, employers, you know, kind of you know, regain some leverage in terms of uh, suggesting that they can't afford to pay these higher wages because they expect demand to weaken and they won't have the sales growth and the profit growth necessary to to meet those higher wage demands. So. Um, so unfortunately, it's an inevitable outcome, you know, when the Fed is in a tightening cycle, and particularly as it moves rapidly to a restrictive level. Um, there's going to be pain, as the Fed chair did admit, uh, for for some people, um, and it's just a question of how many people. And that gets back to the issue of is this a soft landing or a hard landing? And with the you know rapid pace of increases thus far. Uh, and a Fed that doesn't sound like it's willing to back off yet, um, or let alone cut interest rates, uh, we think that the risk of a hard landing has increased, uh, given the uh, the fact that the that the pace of change has been so rapid. It's interesting. I'm looking at your column right now, having read it earlier. It didn't dawn on me, but looking at it, you don't mention one single stock today. Not one. You mentioned no. Putin. You mentioned the Federal Reserve. I don't think I've ever seen that phenomenon out of you. Um, and you, you probably well, have, guess, to be fair. Yeah, I guess you know, subconsciously, perhaps it's just it's the manifestation of, of of knowing that this Fed meeting is the focal point, right? Because everything will feed off of what is heard today, uh, not only uh, seen in the directive, but heard from Fed Chair Powell. And then that will, of course, create a lot of individual stock reactions. But I guess I could have pointed out how General Mills uh, reported better than expected earnings and raised its guidance for for fiscal year 23, uh, which is good news for General Mills. But the driver behind that increased guidance and behind its you know, uh, very good earnings results was the fact that they were able to pass through higher prices. And, uh, you know, and even with their guidance, they're suggesting that they're likely to see low double digit percentage increases in terms of, uh, you know, price realization. Um, that's not a good thing. You know, double digit <laughs> price increases. That's not what the Fed wants to hear 
that's not what a consumer wants to see. And it just kind of gets to the heart of the matter that, you know, we might be stuck with, you know, higher inflation for longer than people might, you know, might want to believe. And that the consequence of that is that you're stuck with a Federal Reserve that's going to be a lot more hawkish with higher interest rates for longer than people think. One of the more interesting articles that I've, I've looked at in the last three months basically said we've had 15 years of basically no interest rates. Well, that's not quite right, but it's close. It's the right idea. And it said, prepare for the next 15 years of more normal interest rates. And you and I talked last week, like mortgage rates aren't crazy right now. They're crazy compared to what they were in the last five years, but not in the last 50 years. Uh, do you think we're in a, a, a shifting market that it's going to be a different 15 year or 10 year or five year cycle than it was um, as an investor, the way we approached it in the last 10, 15? Well, Has the game changed? Yeah, entering. Yeah, we're entering something new here. The duration is is uh, in question, but um, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, Rob, and it's kind of I think born out of the conversation you and I did have last week. Is and and what you oftentimes ask me at the end of these interviews is you know what I'm working on for the big picture column uh, that I post on Friday, mm-hmm. and one of the main ideas I'm I'm exploring right now and researching is just this idea of what you know what quote normal looks like. Right. Because we have been spoiled for so long with these rock bottom interest rates and with a stock market that, you know, seems to go up double digit percentage, you know, most years um, and and a Fed that's, you know, out buying treasuries <laughs> instead of, you know, selling them. Um, so, you know, that column might be oriented this week around just kind of a, a, a chart snapshot of, you know, what normal has looked like. And so people can kind of get their mind around that uh, the period you just talked about, whether it's just from the financial crisis up to now or or even since the pandemic started, that, that that's an abnormal situation, you know, where you've got interest rates at the zero bound um, and, you know, and where we've had very, you know, uh, below trend GDP growth for an extended period of time. So, um, so that that'll be probably the focus of that column this week, but, um, but it's definitely something that people are going to have to get acclimated to, I think for, for a few years anyway, that uh, they're going to be dealing with a higher um, interest rate environment. And that will, you know, lead to some different decisions than they might've made when it was at rock bottom interest rates. Thanks very much. It's Patrick O'Hare with briefing.com, a reliable source of international and domestic news. Big day on the Fed. His writings are insightful. I use them every day. The Rob Black Show is brought to you by EP Wealth. Learn more about EP's unique approach to managing wealth at robblackshow.com. I live in the Bay Area, and I will not go into San Francisco the week of Dreamforce. Just not worth it for me. Too many out-of-towners come to San Francisco networking, talking trash about business, going to concerts like... Uh, The Red Hot Chili Peppers, also known as the Chilies, if you're kind of cool like me. I'm the cool kid. I'm the corner laugher, the kid who sat in the corner laughing at other students. That's me. Um, But it's also like lanyard badge mingling time. I'm really kind of happy to see it. Um, This year, more so than most, in large part because the consequences it has on a city that I love that lives off tourism, dies off tourism, thrives on hospitality. I think it has a lot to offer. Yes, our streets are problematic with homeless and with drugs. And that does hurt international tourism in the city by the bay. But holy mackerel, September is a great month to visit the bay. Usually, this year has been particularly chilly when it's typically particularly warm. The old proverbial Indian summer Uh, which I don't even know if that's politically correct to say anymore. I am so messed up. I think we could do a whole show of Rob's thoughts on politically correct. What can I say? What can I not say? Um, And we could just have the, you know, family feud X and (laughs) almost everything that comes out of my mouth that I want to say that I can't say. It's a pivotal moment for San Francisco right now. Hotels have stepped up. There's a lot of space. There's a lot of, uh, there's no occupancy. So it looks fully occupied for the week, September 20 and 21, 22. 
it's the largest convention in terms of attendance. It's also the most impactful because it brings a lot of money and a lot of power lunches and power dinners. It'll generate $400 million, which is a far cry from the estimated $1.1 billion that the Moscone Center Dreamforce um, pulled off in 2019. So down from $1.1 billion now to $400 million, but it's a big increase from the $20 million in 2021. It's a pretty big thing when you start looking at the dollars attached to it for a three-day period. San Francisco's tourism is bouncing back from the COVID-19 pandemic. Events that attract major publicity like Dreamforce are an opportunity to mold national narratives around the Golden Gate being open for business. Um, attendees go out to eat. They go out to shop. They stay in hotels. Um, I, I see this as an interesting time, to say the least. Speaking of interesting times in the world, there will be over 87.5 million people with $1 million or more in wealth by 2026. That's up from 62 million in 2021. Okay. Okay. We can work with that. Gap is eliminating 500 corporate jobs. Did Kanye West Yeezy cause this? Believe it or not, Gap is kind of hinting that um, they're having some problems. They're cutting spending amid declining sales and ending its partnership with Kanye West. I would have thought they would have been bigger than blaming Kanye West. The answer is they are not bigger than blaming Kanye West. Elsewhere out there um, that we have to hit big stories, Walmart is connecting. Walmart Connect is connecting with TikTok and Snap. Walmart is learning the embarrassingly teenage, embarrassingly awkward teenage dances of they generate revenue. Ad business brought in $2.1 billion for Walmart last year. Uh, getting to know the Generation Z shoppers, you get to know them at TikTok and Snap. You don't really think of Walmart as a TikTok or Snap kind of player, do you? TikTok is expecting nearly triple its ad business to $11 billion this year. Snap, on the other hand, fell short of expectations. Um, everyone's having to deal with Apple's iOS privacy changes. I just want to say a hats off to Walmart for actually being part of a story that we're not laughing at. I mentioned earlier in the show that one of my friends is thinking about selling his house. I'm like, you could also think about renting it maybe for two years. Uh, so you get your tax deductions that you want. And that's just something that doesn't he doesn't want to do. But he also wants to sell at the top, but he doesn't, he missed his opportunity to sell at the top. I believe that housing now is in a six month, 18 month correction. And we're two months into that. Uh, the data that came out on existing home sales today showed that sales fell for a seventh straight month. Prices dropped for a second straight month. Year over year revenue uh, prices are still up 7.7% in the United States. Average median listing is $389,500. Uh, one year ago, it was $361,000. First time buyers account for 29% of all transactions consistent with July of 2022 and a year ago. The number of homes for sale declined. Properties sat on the market for 16 days in August, up from 14 days in July. When properties start sitting for 90 days, that's when home prices really start dropping aggressively because the, it has to be priced to move, 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 move. Cash sales account for 24% of total sales. Elsewhere and or the latest Star Wars series premieres tomorrow on Disney Plus. It's getting rave reviews as I kind of feel Disney keeps going to this well. A little bit too much of superheroes, Marvel, Star Wars, uh, prequels to characters we've seen probably die before or characters we've seen before coming in and out of the canon. But Rogue One gets stars like Forrest Whitaker and um, a, the sets look fantastic. But is enough to get you Disney Plus? Diego Luna, I think, is a, a heck of an actor. He's fun to watch on screen. Um, 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air. Anything that you want to talk about, we can talk about. Let's take a quick look at the overall market. It's game day by the Federal Reserve. 
trepidation ahead of the FOMC decision, updated summary of economic projections in Fed Chairman's press conference afterwards. We're going to get a lot of data. We're going to watch the treasury yields and see how they react. Do they trust the Fed or not trust the Fed? Do they believe the Fed's doing what they're supposed to be doing? The treasury market will tell no lies today after the Fed releases their decision.